Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys why you can't finish your guillotines. This is a very common problem. Uh, I get this question all the time when I'm teaching seminars, privates, in class, right? The problem begins because people think like a guillotine, like in the French Revolution, right? Like I'm going like that and I'm gonna cut his neck with, with this sort of motion, right? So the first problem is my forearm doesn't go flat into his neck like this, right? First thing is you don't wanna do that because if I'm doing this motion right here, really what I'm using is my bicep and I'm just having to squeeze a lot. And this is why people a lot of times they miss their guillotines because they're trying to fish, finish like this. And there's a tendency with my elbow stays high for my shoulder to stay level, right? And this makes a lot of room for them to pull their heads out. Uh, so it turns out to be a lot of muscle, a lot of squeezing, not a lot of mechanics behind the guillotine. So I'm gonna show you a way uh, how I like to finish the traditional guillotine, arm in or arm out. It's gonna be the same connections, the same technique really. Uh, there are different ways of finishing. I'm not suggesting my way is the only way, but this is the way that has worked for me over the years. So what I'm gonna do is I'm always gonna hold the outside of my hand and I'm gonna think about wrist locking myself. So it's really the shape I'm gonna create with my arm is no longer this flat surface here. It's gonna be more like a V with the shoulder high, the elbow low, my wrist high and my hand down. It's almost like a, a V with my wrist at the end going down. This is what I'm looking for. What I'm trying to get into my opponent's neck is the wrist, this little bone right here. Right, it's not so much the, the, this part of my forearm, but it's close to my actual hand. So I can start my guillotine by cupping the chin. I'm gonna cup the outside of my wrist and I'm gonna roll the, uh, uh, the top of my wrist into the neck. Now, why is the elbow low? So I, I, like, the, I like the elbow low for two reasons. I want the, sh the wrist to be high and the shoulder to be high. In all my years of jiu-jitsu, I've never seen anyone pull their head out that way. Whenever they pull their heads out, it's always this way. And that normally happens when my shoulder drops. If my shoulder drops, there's always room for the head to pop out. Throughout the whole sequence, I'm gonna keep my shoulder very high on the back of his neck. Please keep in mind that the pressure of a guillotine begins the second I connect my hands, not when I hit the ground, not when I'm on my side, not when I'm ready to finish. In fact, this is gonna begin the second I connect and I roll my shoulder over the back of the neck. A very good reference is for me to cover the back of my opponent's neck with my shoulder. If I can see the back of the neck, there's a good chance he can pull his head out. Let me show you guys really quick. So there are different uh, ways of setting my legs for the guillotine. I'm, I, I like to use what I call an open guard guillotine, which is basically preventing my opponent from going towards his escape side. Because if he's in front, if I'm in a closed guard and I have a guillotine and I always want his head towards the ground, what happens is if he walks to his right, he might be able to flatten me out. And once I'm flat, you know, I'm not so much in a good position anymore. Go back. Now I have to squeeze. And really what I'm looking for is mechanically to be on my side. So I'm always pushing his forehead into the ground. For that to happen, I have to be on my right butt cheek so his head goes on the ground. So I prefer what I call an open guard guillotine. You can do it from closed guard as well, but the open guard guillotine basically I'm gonna have my shin in front of his belly and it prevents him from walking that way to the outside. Now what this does, it forces him to stay on my good side and prevents him from going around me, which is his good side, right? In the perfect world, Alex would be able to clear my legs that way. I wanna keep him over here. So once I connect, it's like I'm wrist locking myself, you see how my shoulder stays high and my elbow stays low. Because again, no one's going to pull their head out that way towards you guys. But the shoulder's got to stay high. When I go on my side, I'm only, my, oh, it's only my right butt cheek on the ground. I don't really, my spine never touches the ground. And I keep my arms in tight. I'm going to step around his waist with my leg and I'm pushing his hip away with my heel. The entire sequence, guys, I always want some space between the ground and my shoulder. I know it's a little more work because a lot of people, they, what they do is they fall for the guilty, they let the shoulder drop, and then they'll try to fix it. And a lot of times that's too late. So you gotta make an effort when you connect, really keep your shoulder high the whole time as I go on my side and I, yes, okay? So you can see that I wasn't squeezing, but mechanically the move is very tight because my body's tilted on a 45 degree angle. And I'm always thinking about burying his forehead into the ground. Also notice that both my legs are preventing him from clearing my legs to go to side control, which is where he would like to be. I force him to stay on my good side. Uh, if you have the arm in guillotine, which is normally what you have, right? It's very rare. One thing I like about the open guard guillotine, especially for MMA um, or a self-defense situation, is that if I don't like this, if I feel like he's gonna pop his head out, I have a way out. So if I'm in here and I feel like his head is slipping out, I can always go like this. And now it's easy for me to recover back to my feet. I don't have to stay underneath them if I don't want to, right? I have that option with the arm men guillotine. Another detail here, guys, is, I mean, if I'm in closed guard and I want to finish in closed guard, that's perfectly fine. But the technique is the same. What I try to do is I try to go on my side and I kind of tweak my, yes. 
I kind of tweak my open guard. No, I wasn't even squeezing. I was just connecting. But by going on my side, I actually dig the wrist into the neck. So mechanically, my position is a lot better. Notice that when I had that close guard, I was sort of like this. I'm trying to get this knee on the ground. So I'm in the same position I was when I had that open guard guillotine where the shin goes on his waist and this one goes over his lower back. If I happen to be in close guard, it's the same position really as my legs are, are changing position. What I don't want is to finish the guillotine here. Because anytime I finish a guillotine flat on my back, I lose the mechanics of the move. And now I'm trying to compensate by squeezing, right? And squeezing, again, we had a video about this a while ago. I'm not against squeezing. There's a time for squeezing, but normally it's gonna go adjustment, adjustment. And the last thing you do is squeeze, right? If I were on top, it would go adjustment, weight distribution, and then squeezing. But you should never start a position by squeezing. That's why a lot of times I like to practice these submissions without connecting my hands. So I'm not relying on that to finish, okay? Guys, try this out next time you go for a guillotine. Focus on this V position. Focus on covering the back of the neck with the shoulder. Think of wrist locking yourself like I'm digging this little bone into the neck. Stay tilted on your side on that 45 degree angle and be consistent about your choke. Remember, chokes are never, you're never doing that with your chokes, right? It's always consistent. Think of a ramp beginning with very little pressure, maybe 40, 50%, and then ramping it up all the way to 100%. Normally your opponent taps way before that. Just never start with too much pressure because it's hard to keep that consistency throughout the choke. And the truth of the matter is chokes are not quick submissions, they take time, so you gotta be patient. So the reason why people struggle finishing the guillotine is because they're trying to dig the forearm into the neck like this, right? It doesn't work that way. Really, it's not a flat surface. What I'm trying to do is create a V with my arm. So I go shoulder high, elbow low, wrist high. This is the shape I'm trying to create. Also very important, I'm trying to cover the back of the neck with my shoulder. Because if my shoulder's low, he pulls his head out. So I keep my shoulder high as I'm digging the wrist into the neck. Also very important, I have to stay on my side. Whether I'm in an open guard guillotine or in a closed guard guillotine, I have to be on my side. This is the position I want to be in to finish. Notice my shoulder off the ground, covering the back of the neck, digging the wrist into the neck on my side here or on my side here. But in both situations, I'm not flat on my back. You don't want to be flat on your back to finish your guillotine. Otherwise, you're squeezing. Hey everyone, I noticed that a lot of you guys are watching the videos, but you're forgetting to subscribe. Remember guys, if you subscribe, we're going to be reminding you guys whenever we have a new video out. So just so you stay, uh, stay in tune with what we're doing here at the channel. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, let everyone know. If you believe the channel has value, please spread the word.